I am a, teach, a teacher and English school owner from Okayama Prefecture, and I use Happy Valley. And I first started using Happy Valley about three or four years ago. I had been looking for a very long time for a textbook for three-year-olds, and I had not found anything that met my criteria. I wanted something that could gently introduce them to what a textbook was. I wanted to add structure to my lesson by having them take out their textbook, open the book, look at the teacher talking about the pictures, pointing to pictures as the teacher points, and maybe counting objects on their page as the teacher counts, modeling, asking, and answering quite a bit in the classroom. And then I wanted them to see that there was a time to close the book and transition to something else. I envisioned them using the book for maybe five minutes at the beginning of the year. And slowly, as they became more acclimated to the whole experience, I wanted them to be able to maybe sit a little longer and participate a little bit more in a circle time. So I was going to show you my criteria for what I was looking for and what I had trouble finding because I really looked for a long time. And my criteria might be like yours. Do you like clear pictures? Easy to recognize. There are two really important reasons for having clear pictures in a book for three-year-olds. One, you want a 100% English classroom. And if your picture does not communicate for you, there's a breakdown in communication, right? And there's another reason. You want the kids, kids at that age have just developing visual spatial uh, skills. And so it's hard for them to see details in pictures. Harder than it might seem for you when you're looking at a picture. And so when you are asking them to look and point at something in the book, and if a three-year-old has a little bit of frustration in being able to achieve that, what is a three-year-old born to do in your class if he feels a little frustrated? Any ideas? Um, yeah, a lot of different things, but in, in my experience, they stand up and they walk over to a corner and play with something on a shelf. And that's the end. You know, they have given you clear feedback that whatever you're doing isn't working. And often the book has pictures that, that are, are doing that, that making it harder for you to do your job. I also look for, oh, excuse me. I got it. I, I also look for a good storyline. I want characters that are emotionally engaging for the students, uh, and I want those characters to be doing something in the book that the children actually do in their everyday lives. And that means I do not want to see discussions about school life with a teacher in a book I'm teaching to children who have never been to school. Okay, I'm looking for home and around the home kind of experience for that first uh, level. And I also want realistic goals. I want it, them to be very clearly stated for the teacher to understand. I have employees that really need to understand that. I need the uh, students to understand it, but I also need the parents to understand. I need everybody to know what the goals are, and I want them to be achievable because I want three-year-olds who try to do something in a class that is a goal to succeed. Success and lots of experiences with success develops children who believe they can. And three-year-olds, is that's not the time to set them up for failure with too difficult of a book. Uh, I also want flexibility in a textbook. I really like the fact that Happy Valley has separate components. The phonics program is separate from the speaking book because in my school sometimes I have to uh, uh, make an unusual class of new students who, who um, haven't studied for a while or I'm combining classes and sometimes like this year I'm going to be teaching um, level two of this textbook series with, which is typically taught uh, to four-year-olds going on five-year-olds I've been teaching it this year to three-year-olds, 
and, and actually teaching the Happy Valley Level 1 to 2 year olds. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that for the first time you use the book, but I know what I'm doing and I can adapt. Okay, but, but uh, for the most success, I, I think uh, Happy Valley Level 1 is, is the start for 3, go three year olds, and, and then the 4 year olds would do Happy Valley 2. But what happens though is a lot of textbooks have phonics embedded into the books. And, and, and then you, you feel like you're pretty much forced to teach that phonics to the kids. But sometimes your kids aren't ready for the phonics message that they're teaching. And, and, and you're losing them. And, and it's frustrating because, because that's, that's, you want to be in control of that. You know your students. So this way you can choose a component that's ready. The, I, I think the, the phonics level two is an excellent book for um, a, what they call then Chuson or a four year olds going on five year olds. I think it's a great book for that. And uh, that's when I want to use it for my school. Um, I also uh, really think good music is important. Who here really, really thinks music is an important part of a children's classroom? Okay, well, I think that's obvious. It should be number one on this list because for me, it's everything. But I have really strict criteria for the kind of music I use in my young kids' classes because I want them to be strictly grammatically graded songs. I don't want any language in there that they don't understand or can't speak and understand what they're saying. I really want the songs to be great, but I also want them to be slowly paced and clearly enunciated with vocals up front so that the kids can hear it they, and, and they can sing it. I want them to be able to sing these songs. And a lot of textbooks have music that's really exciting. And it's okay if it's just for touching your nose and touching your head and moving your body kind of songs. If you want a little extraneous language you know, mixed in there, fine. But if you're teaching the song to specifically get them to sing, to learn speaking tasks, then you need songs that are carefully structured for that purpose. And that's uh, another thing I like about Happy Valley. Um, also, I want good teacher support. Have a seat in the front. Not that we're all looking at you, right? Yeah. Well, anyway, a good teacher support, because I have teachers at my school who are not experienced teachers, and I need them to be able to uh, have guidance in the book itself. Track numbers on the pages, please, right? I mean, have you ever taught a book where the track numbers aren't there and you have to sit there and, and try to keep track of it? And that is so annoying, and it doesn't have to be that way. And also, you know, guidance on the uh, on a bar on the bottom that explains the language point that, that you might want to work. Just a little heads up, a little heads up, and, and also uh, recycling throughout the books so that a teacher who doesn't know how to recycle very e easily, consciously, will, you know, the book just makes them do it, you know. I mean, that's, you want a book that's easy enough so that anybody can be successful using it, right? So um, I want to show you some uh, of Happy Valley now. And I want to see if you agree with me that it meets the criteria, right? So here is the first unit of Happy Valley Level 2, which is typically taught to four-year-olds going on five-year-olds, okay? And a lot of things is going on in this particular uh, time in April. Well, in my school, we have new students that have to be mixed with old students because we don't have enough classrooms and teachers to, you know, have separate classes for two kids who come on. So we, we combine them, right? Most people do, I think. But you need a book that's going to help acclimate the new students and also give your, uh, uh, your current students something to, new to take away from it. So what do we have to do? We have to introduce the main characters of the book, which are Pinka, who is a girl, and Kinka, who is a boy. And they are and Billy and Betty Bus are the characters that join them in Happy Valley Level 1. And they will be joined by other characters in Happy Valley Level 2. Fewer characters in the first book because three-year-olds can't really cope with too many characters. But um, and we're going to be learning vehicles. There are a few points on this page. How's the weather? It's sunny. We, we, that's a, you know, from the first level of the series. What is it? It's a flower. How many turtles? One, two, two turtles. 
and what color is, is another language point we'd be recycling. And of course, the vehicles are various colors. The new language is vehicles because vehicles are fun for a first class, right? So let's see how they do that. Oh, notice uh, track numbers and you know support for the teachers. So I want to get to the next page though because this is my favorite page of the whole unit. And it doesn't look as exciting as the first page, but this is where the real work happens. Because first of all, we've got the goal. Our stated goal for this unit is what is it? It's a car. It's red. It's a red car. Recycled language from the previous level is what is it? It's a car, but not a vehicle. It's a flower. <coughs> and what color? It's red. But what's new is that they're combining the adjective red with the noun car and making a longer statement. So that's what we're going to be doing. It, it, it's just a simple expansion because we have to also spend time on this unit to bring the new kids in and recycle information. So what do you have to do when you've got to do that to all the students? First, for the new students, you've got to teach um, uh, what is it and what color, right? And, and that works. Colors aren't too hard to teach kids, right? I mean, it happens in every class. But um, you have to teach the vocabulary in, in, in isolation from any sentence structure because the kids have to learn pronunciation. And, and I really do elongated pronunciation with my young kids' classes to increase their phonological awareness and build their uh, sound discrimination skills. That's a really important part of the way I teach. So we'll be going, uh, Car. And, and well, you know, then having, it's silly, it's silly, it sounds ridiculous, but it's the way to get kids to make, have fun articulating language. And you've got to get down and be silly, right? And, and all these, you know, otherwise they'll be calling a, 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 a boat a boom. You know, they won't be saying boat. You know, you want them to hear all the sounds and, and to articulate them all. So. Well, they, Happy Valley has a really nice chant, and oh, oh, there are gestures for every vocabulary word in the Happy Valley series. You don't have to learn them all, but kids like gestures, and if you want to learn them all, they're uh, available uh, for you to use too. But um, I'm going to uh, do the first chant uh, that teaches the, the words, and I can either have the students pointing to their pictures and saying with their mommies, and at three years old, they're with their mommies. Or, or we can use gestures. Um, Three-year-olds, you know, aren't as uh, good at gestures while learning words in the beginning. That would come later, but um, I'm going to demonstrate it. Car, car, car. Truck, truck, truck. truck. Plane, plane, plane. Boat, boat, boat. Car. Truck, plane, boat, car, truck, plane, boat, tractor, 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 train, 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 bus, 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 helicopter, 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 tractor, train, bus, helicopter, tractor, train. at saying the, it's, the, 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 the names of the things, then you, you step it up. You're going to do another drill with them, but it's a new song, so they don't know you're doing a new drill, right? So here we go, and it's a, 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 it's a car. It's a track.
what's in the book, right? But we have another song. Oh, the music and movements are getting, this is the grammar song, the one that puts it all together. And it's something where the kids can get up and dance and, and, and do it. And I think you can stand up and do it with me. <laughs> Just give it a try. <laughs> Come on. We're videotaping, so. It's <laughs> like Right. Yeah, sweaty. yeah, it's a, it's a, oh, yeah see really if like it that. might be fun for your little kids in, in doing this. Here we go! Dice with dots on it, and we'll throw it 
and they'll count the dots and then we'll try to find the numeral and those who can't immediately find it, of course, we just count one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. And then we, we, we draw with a crayon and then I'll say, what is it? It's a truck. Ah, it's red. It's a red truck. So we're still speaking the language through interactive experiences when their hands are busy. They are able to sometimes focus longer because um, there's something about physically moving, coloring, and talking at the same time which, which allows them to focus when otherwise they, they're all over the room. So I, I do a lot of prints like this. And color uh, shapes are also another recycling uh, element from the previous level. So I make some prints to add to the fun. And um, the next unit will give you a little insight into the storyline of the whole level two book, which I just love. We go to all these places, and the uh, language point for this unit is, let's go to the aquarium, okay? And, and then, you know, we love putting our fingers on and singing a song, and then putting our fingers on the map and going through it. But I, I also put all the pictures around on the walls, and we, we get our little vehicle cart uh, on chopsticks, little cars with vehicles, and then when we sing the song, we go to all the different places in the room, and we, you know, we kind of pretend that we're going to different places. But it's really important to go to these places in a book, because the work of the book is to give you a chance to bring the world into your classroom so that you can teach more vocabulary, more context of, of language. And so in every one of these places, we're learning new vocabulary and we're learning uh, new uh, language structures that are important for kids to be connecting with. So I really like that. But moving on, this is level one of the series. I just want to show you how it's a little bit different. We don't go all those places in level one because they're three. You know, they're young little kids. They play around the house and in the yard, okay? That's what they do. And here, one thing that two and three-year-olds really are interested in is clothes. Because their mommy's still helping them dress. And they want to learn how to do it. And it's a really important life skill that they're learning. So that's a very... In and in this particular uh, unit, we're learning how to put on and take off. And the language target, though, even though there's a lovely song that gets you to mimic putting on clothes and taking off clothes uh, for, because it's an important receptive skill to know. Uh, the language target here is, where's my hat? There. And why is that a, a really practical language point? Because after they learn, where's my hat? Where are my shoes? There, there, there. You can say, where's my book? Where's my no, my, my bag. And, and you can use that language in many different contexts in your class. And I, I really appreciate that about Happy Valley. And um, I wanted to share a song with you that brings this all together. And I want you to look around the classroom where I have put things on the walls. In my classroom, it's more 3D. You know, I've got them all over the place. And, and I like to teach, I've got lots of different pictures of, of, of uh, clothes on the walls and I play a game with them. Where, where's, where are my red shorts? Where, where is my blue hat? And they have to go running around and, and finding those things. And the thing is, what's interesting is these words are very difficult sound discrimination wise. I don't know if you've ever taught clothing to kids, but skirt, t-shirt, shoes, shorts, they, they, they all sound similar to a little kid. So when I'm teaching it in the first, you know, at first, I'm saying, where are my red shorts? And they might either go to something red, uh, you know, did I say blue? Yeah, where? Okay, red. 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 Okay, they go to just anything that's red. And it's not, it's not what, what you're asking. Or they'll go to the noun, and it'll be any color. So, you know, the, every week for about five minutes, I'll say, oh, let's play the where's my, where's my hat game. And, you know, after teaching the song I'm going to show you, 
we, they're very excited to be able to listen to the different sounds and, and to find the things. And they get good at it, but it takes practice. It takes practice. So I want you, as your participation in this song, to when the song prompts you, to point to things in the room and say, there. And I'm going to be asking you where things are. Okay? Where's my hat? Where's my hat? Uh, 
form you'll, you'll get a chance to take home today. Um, this is designed for uh, the last year in, in kindergarten. Yeah, and uh, what's going on here is that we're going to be teaching in, on, under. A very important concept that is very difficult to teach to any age and yet critically important for eventually comprehending uh, both, both uh, English language and, and also in understanding reading comprehension, you know, reading comprehension later. So I do a lot of work with in on under using gestures. So when I'm using that in the classroom, oh, where's my book? Where's my book? Oh, it's under the basket, or it's on the table. Where's my crayon? Oh, it's in the, bo the, the box, or something like that. So um, before I teach this unit, I, I would um, recommend doing a lot of priming with <laughs> gestures and talking about, you know, first, even, it, it doesn't matter how long, uh, more, two, three months, it doesn't matter, but, you know, try to incorporate, you know, attention to where things are and, uh, and, and gestures that, that help to uh, help them connect to that. And I want you to hear the audio for these. There's audio for each one of these, and I, I want you to hear the storyline here. Today, Kinka, Pinka, and their friends are at the playground. Where is everyone? Pinka is on the slide. Whee! Iggy Iguana is in the sandbox. Cute sandcastle, Iggy. Kippy Kangaroo and Lopsy Fox are on the seesaw. I like the seesaw. Me too. Who is that on the bars? It's Millie Monkey. Millie is under the bars. She is good at hanging. Millie is the best at climbing and hanging. Everyone looks very happy. Where do you want to be? On the swings? On the seesaw, on the slide, in the sandbox, on the jungle gym, or under the bars. Now the author of this series, Catherine Litter, Little Hill Oki, likes to lead her class, her uh, in her introduction to a lesson with this. I tend to use it as a second day uh, uh, or a third week. Uh, I like to, when, when they're getting a little less attention, uh, when I'm getting a little less attention, when I'm describing the picture and trying to talk to them, I'll throw that on and suddenly I get attention again and they're into it again. So, you know, you, you, you got to experiment with, with how you want to use something like that, but it's, good, it's a good model for teachers to hear the language and to know what kind of language they can be uh, consciously trying to uh, integrate into their conversations with their students. It's a good model. And um, there's a song, of course, and in the back of the book there are extra songs and there's the picture. And I thought I'd share it with you because if you can't uh, get them to learn it through anything else, <laughs> a song is always helpful. <laughs>
computer. <laughs> we didn't have, Where's the laptop? And then they might try to all say, on! They might not say on the table at this point, but, um, but you're, you're just introducing it, and, and eventually that'll come. Uh, so there are extra songs in the back of all the Happy Valley volumes, and so that's always helpful to get some more with picture support. And here's a song that is in the back of Happy Valley Level 2 because their, their goal is to learn the numerals 1 through 20. Count, not only counting, but knowing the numbers. And that's hard. That's hard for, for kids sometimes if they haven't had exposure at home. And so how do we do this? Well, I have them open their books as kind of a warm-up song. and. I have them point to these numbers as they're singing this song, and let's see if maybe you can feel the love. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We count it up to ten. Let's do it. Well, you get the point. 
but just a little 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 heads up. Uh, z the zebra, z uh, Ziggy zebra, is forgotten at the end, and and he says, "Hey, what about me?" Mm -hmm. And and at the end of the song, they're like, "Oh, I'm sorry, that's okay." And then they do the Ziggy zebra one. <laughs> the kids think it's hilarious. They they burst up laughing every single week. It's like <laughs> they forgot Ziggy, you know, whatever, you know. But <laughs> so here we go. We've got a phonics program too, um, which uh, has stickers and cards and teachers cards and student cards and they've got you know ways to work it in class it's designed for uh, a supplement into the happy valley program and uh, i really like how it has uh gives more uh room for the phone animal characters to expand and, and to kind of build their world um and, and as I say, I like it because it's also flexible in choosing what level of student is going to use it. And it works really well as a supplement in other textbooks as well, actually. And uh, that is uh, a nice, nice compliment. And um, they've got a picture dictionary in the back of everyone for playing <laughs> games and asking them to find things in their books. And that's kind of fun. And uh, basically, they have language support tells you for planning your classes everything in the book and where it is and what the language points are and that's always helpful the uh, videos that of Catherine little Hill, little, little Hill Oki doing every gesture in the entire series it for teacher support is on the yeah is, is on the uh, happy Valley TV website and you've got uh, the free downloadable teaching uh, support materials in Japanese as well. So you've got the whole series there. And uh, today, one thing I really like, the, the CD is available at English uh, Books. And it's only 2,000 yen uh, uh, compared to many t uh, series where you have to pay like 8,000, 7,000 yen. Or, or whatever, and I'm buying one for every student in my classes because it's cheap enough to be able to, for my school to budget to be able to afford for them to take it home and use it at home too. So um, that's that's another option because it's it's in kind of on the lower price range. Anyway, so um, that's it. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Goodbye, 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 goodbye